Hello one and all. Welcome back to our channel from Open Pen Innovation Lab Bangalore. Before diving into the next topic, what are all the first thing what comes to your mind when you hear of companies such as AMD, Intel, Texas Instruments and many others? Yes, it is silicon chips. So, our today's topic based on a viewer request from our last video will be talking about the chip packaging and the photonic integration. Let's see what we can offer. Today's topic, chip packaging and photonics integration will also be covering about network on a chip, system on a chip, lab on a chip, MEMS and NEMS. Like, share and subscribe. We'll be posting new content every week on Friday. What is a chip packaging? In electronics manufacturing, integrated circuit packaging is the final stage of semiconductor device fabrication in which the block of semiconductor material is encapsulated in a supporting case that prevents physical damage and corrosion. This package supports the electrical contacts which connect the device to a circuit board. Packaging is an essential part of semiconductor manufacturing and design. It affects power, performance and cost on a macro level and the basic functionality of all chips on a micro level. Since we are talking about photonic integration, we will see what is photonics. It usually involves generation of a photon which is light, its detection, manipulation via transmission, emission, signal processing, modulation, switching, amplification and sensing. It is said to be an all pervasive technology because it allows unlimited light to travel faster than electrons that are used in electronic computer chips meaning optical computers having the capacity to compute thousands of times faster than any electronic computers because of the physical limitations of the electronic conduction. Photonic involve many different technologies like optical fibers, laser detectors, quantum electronics, fibers and materials. In the diagram you can see a photonic chip which has an optical combination source with a low loss waveguide, a detector and a modulator. Silicon on insulator is a worldwide widely used substrate what we see here in the diagram having a silicon channel. So how it usually works is by placing a thin insulating layer such as silicon oxide between a thin layer of silicon and the silicon substrate. Usually this process helps reduce junction capacitance resulting in higher speed and lower power consumption. In semiconductor manufacturing the silicon on insulator technology is fabrication of silicon semiconductor devices in a layered silicon insulator silicon substrate. What are MEMS or microelectromechanical systems? It is a technology that can be defined as a miniaturized mechanical and electromechanical elements which can be devices and structures that are made using the techniques of microfabrication. Miniaturized structures, sensors also microsensors and actuators having also microactuators are the functional elements of MEMS. Here in the diagram what you are seeing is actually a MEMS based microactuator. So this is a surface which is micro machined electrostatically actuated micro motor fabricated by a company called MNX. So the real potential of MEMS start to become fulfilled when these miniaturized sensors, actuators and structures can all be merged onto a common silicon substrate along with the integrated circuits which are also microelectronics. While the electronics are fabricated using the integrated circuit process sequences which includes CMOS, bipolar or bi CMOS process, the micro mechanical components are fabricated using compatible micro machining process that selectively etch away parts of the silicon wafer or add new structural layers to form the mechanical and electromechanical devices. 
It is even more interesting if MEMS can be merged not only with microelectronics but with other technology such as photonics, nanotechnologies and others. This is sometimes called heterogeneous integration. As MEM fabrication methods advance, the promise is an enormous design freedom wherein any type of microsensor and any type of microactuator can be merged with microelectronics as well as photonics nanotechnology onto a single sub. So what are all the challenges in MEMS technology? The challenge of MEMS devices is the rapid development and availability of low cost wafers, thin film targets and emerging electrode material demonstrating exceptional electrical efficiency and processing of semiconductors. Reliability of MEMS devices requires better understanding of mechanism that cause failure in MEMS devices. Production of reliable MEMS device require sophisticated design consideration and better control of microfabrication process that are used in production and packaging of a MEMS device. Reliable MEMS package should prevent transfer of heat, mechanical strain, outgassing, pressure, moisture, etc. Now we'll talk about nano electromechanical systems or NEMS. Usually they are class of devices integrating electrical and mechanical functionality on the nano scale. They integrate nano electronics with mechanical actuator, pump, motor and form physical, biological and chemical sensors. So what are all the challenges they have? It requires lot of study of other materials or higher strength composites. And there is a problem with the scalability of the production and the smooth commercialization of the fine finished product and sustainability. So when we are discussing about single silicon chip to implement all the features on the single substrate, concepts such as network on a chip, system on a chip and lab on a chip are worth our attention, have just briefed it up for the easy understanding. What is network on a chip? They are usually subsystem based integrated circuit that integrates even a component of a particular system. It is designed for an organized network. Single silicon chip is used to implement the communication features of a large scale to a very large scale integration system. Coming to system on a chip, it is a microchip with all the necessary electronic circuit and parts of a for a given system such as smartphone or a wearable computer on a single integrated circuit. It is more like an embedded system that ties every unit of a particular device together. And then a lab on a chip. It integrates and automates multiple lab techniques into a system that fits on a chip up to a maximum of a few square centimeters in size. By manipulating reagents on the micro scale effect such as rapid heating and mixing can be exploited. It also allows waste and exposure to dangerous chemicals to be as minimized as possible. Although MEMS and lab on chip communities have made efforts in incorporating the optical devices into their microsystems to improve the functionality, a wide variety of optofluidic devices have also been in constant work in progress. So here it is good to know about the optofluidics, which it fundamentally aims at manipulating fluids and light at the micro scale and exploiting their interaction to create highly versatile systems. So application areas such as biosensors, displays, lab on chip devices, lens, molecular imaging requires light source to be embedded onto a chip which is very challenging especially on a nano scale. So coming to the challenges and the future scope. It is to be admitted that integrating the light source and the sensing device on the single substrate still remains a big challenge. So the light source we are talking about is monolithic light source which are in the form of organic light emitting diodes or OLEDs 
quantum dots. If we are able to integrate quantum dot, the future chip will be photonic quantum circuit. And it is still a research in progress, uh, which has been uh, still undergoing in Stanford and Harvard. So they are working with graphene based fluorescent quantum dots. So what happens here is they are trying to produce the light when it is in an excited state through quantum dots. So silicon on insulator are widely used as a substrate. It includes silicon oxide, silicon nitride or gallium arsenide. More research can be done with polymer materials to fine tune the material properties at nanoscale so that such substrate can be employed amenable to monolithic integration of various chip components on a single substrate. Hope this was an engaging content. A big shout out to Dr. Naran K, who is our subject matter expert in nanoscience and engineering. And I have provided a list of all the references I had to go through for the creation of this content. See you next week.